In this video, I would like to do an example that we've solved a different way, but I want to solve it now using energy um, because there are some advantages to doing that. Um, so what I would like to do specifically is consider the case where we have an object, like let's say a cylinder, that is rolling down a ramp that has an angle theta. Um, and I want to consider um, the object having rolled some distance L from its starting point when it was at rest. Okay, so we'll assume that we know things like the mass and the you know radius and stuff of that cylinder. Okay, so first let's just review ways that we knew how to do this before. Um, so one way that we could do this is we could draw an extended free body diagram um, and calculate all the torques. So the torque equals I alpha. Um, we could use um, F equals MA and then the relationship that alpha equals A over R in order to solve the problem. Okay, and it was kind of a pain, not that much fun to do. Um, we didn't actually do this one, but there's another way that we can solve this. We could also have done um, the angular momentum technique. Okay, so the change in angular momentum of the object as it rolls is going to be equal to the torque on it times delta t. Okay, so that may also have required drawing an extended free body diagram to figure out the torque, but maybe not. Um, that might have been a little bit simpler because we had a lot less forces floating around that we needed to worry about. Well, now I want to do yet a third method that will give the exact same answer, but in a different way. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to use the work kinetic energy theorem in order to solve the situation. Um, and I've already written it incorrectly. Um, it's not work equals kinetic energy, work equals the change in kinetic energy. Okay, so what forces are doing work in this case? Well, it turns out that only gravity is doing work. Okay, and we can kind of uh, come back to that a little later to talk about why, but the work done by gravity is just going to be mgh. All right, so as the object has rolled a distance L, the height that it has gone um, is just going to be L sine theta. So you can convince yourself that that's the case. So mgl sine theta is the work that's done by gravity. Okay, so the work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. Well, we have two different kinds of kinetic energy. Okay, so um, first we have um, Ke final minus Ke initial, so to get that out of the way. But the initial and final are both going to have rotational and linear um, portions of the kinetic energy. So one half mvf squared plus one half i omega f squared. So that's the final kinetic energy, both the linear and rotational parts, minus the same thing for initial. So one half mvi squared plus one half um, I omega squared. Okay. Um, notice that um, at first it's not moving, so the velocity and the rotational velocity will be zero, so we don't have to worry about um, the second portion of this. Okay, also notice that there's a relationship between the velocity and the angular velocity. Okay, so omega is going to equal V over R, where R is the radius of the cylinder. Okay, so I can rewrite this then. One half MVF squared plus one half I over R squared VF squared. Okay, and notice that both of these are in terms of VF. Okay, so what I'm going to do is factor that out. So one half M plus one half I over R squared VF squared. Okay, so that's the change in kinetic energy. It's the same as just the final kinetic energy if the initial is zero. And remember, work is equal to that change in kinetic energy. So I can set that equal to MGL sine theta. Okay, so this is a formula for the speed in terms of the position, which is actually a pretty interesting thing to have. Um, arguably, that's more interesting than knowing the acceleration, but we can still calculate the acceleration to show that this comes out the same as what it did using the other methods. So if we have a formula for velocity, but we want acceleration, how do we get that? Well, we do that by taking a derivative. So I'm going to take a derivative of both sides here with respect to time. Okay, and most of the things are going to be constant. So the mass is constant, the angle is constant, but L is going to tell me how far down the ramp the cylinder has rolled since the beginning. Okay, so when I take the derivative of L with respect to time, um, how far it's rolled as a function of time, I'm going to get a velocity. So this will become mgv sine theta. Um, on the right, the stuff that's in the parentheses is all constant. So the mass isn't changing, the moment of inertia is not changing. Um, but when I take the derivative of velocity squared, um, I'm going to get two times the velocity and from the chain rule, the derivative of the velocity, which is the acceleration. Okay, so notice that I have velocity on the left, velocity on the right, so those will cancel. And I get mg sine theta equals one half m plus one half i over r squared times um, two a. So I can cancel out the twos because I have a bunch of halves and twos. And so when I do that, I'm going to get the acceleration is equal to mg sine theta over m plus i over r squared. Okay, so this is the relationship for um, the acceleration, and it looks just like the one that we got using a different method. Uh, so notice, I didn't have to draw any free body diagrams. I didn't have to calculate any torques. I didn't have to use the right hand rule at all. Um, and we even got the velocity as a function of position, which as I mentioned, is a relatively interesting um, expression to have. That's you know probably at least as interesting as the acceleration. Um, one of the things that I mentioned, but um, didn't go into a great amount of detail about is how do we know that the gravity is the only force doing work? Well, if we want to make that case, um, then I do have to go and draw a free body diagram for um, the wheel or the cylinder. So what forces are on it? Well, gravity 
is exerting a force, and that is going to have a component that does work. Um, the normal force is actually going to be perpendicular to the direction of motion, so that's why we don't get uh, um, any work done by that. Um, and then the friction also is going to be um, up the plane, um, and so it could do work, um, but th the point of contact where the friction is exerted is always stationary. So if the cylinder is not slipping, then friction is not doing any work because the point where the friction is exerted is not moving. Okay, so that part's a little tricky, and we will come back to that to understand why that's the right rule to use rather than the center of mass displacement. But um, in any case, uh, gravity is the only force that's actually doing work here. Um, one of the things that I really like about using energy to solve this problem, rather than using either of the other two methods, is that I think energy gives us one of the most intuitive explanations for why different objects will roll down the same ramp at different rates. So um, why do different objects roll at different rates? And the reason is because the work which is equal to the change in kinetic energy, or the final kinetic energy, um, in this case, because the initial can be zero, is going to be um, one half mv squared final plus one half i omega squared final. Um, so what we want to know essentially is how fast they're going. Okay, so we want that term to be as big as possible, which means that we want the other term to be as small as possible. Okay, we can think of any kinetic energy that's going towards rotation as kinetic energy that's not going towards the linear motion. Um, it's essentially kinetic energy that we're wasting on rotating an object rather than letting it move forward. Okay, so objects that have a large moment of inertia are wasting more energy on rotating. Objects that have a lower moment of inertia are not. And so, um, you know, if we compare a cylinder versus a sphere versus a hoop that's rolling down a ramp, um, whichever one has the lowest moment of inertia has the most linear kinetic energy and moves the fastest. 